Hey everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with screencast number 10. We're going to be talking about the three different styles of website layouts. Those three different styles, uh, really generically, I'm talking about are fixed width, uh, elastic width, and fluid width. Three different styles there. So what we're going to do in the first part of this podcast is look at some websites uh, of those different styles and see, you know, the advantages, disadvantages, who's, you know, doing it well, doing it poorly, that kind of thing. And then the second part, we're going to look at some code and how you can get started uh, with each of those three different styles. So that's the plan. So I, this is the second time I'm shooting this. I shot it once already, and, and what I wanted to do was, was shoot it at a bigger size. I was going to shoot it at 1280 by 7 whatever, uh, because a lot of websites, there's just the, the size of this video right now that you're looking at is 800 by 600, and so many websites um, are just bigger than that. And to, to really show these things, I thought we were going to need a little more pixel room in order to show you. But it kind of turned out that... Uh, the file size was just too big and I just decided it would be better to reshoot it and just keep the same consistent size so some of these examples might you I'm gonna have to like kinda move some stuff off screen but I think this is ultimately gonna be better so let's just get started and, and see how it goes here the, the the this first website that we're looking here right now is an example of a fixed width website so watch as I resize the browser here Everything stays centered, but but uh, the content itself stays the same width. So uh, that's you know pretty straightforward. That's what happens. But what's interesting to note is that when you increase the text size, and that's usually Command Plus in uh, Safari, like I'm in here or in Firefox, what happens is it increases the size of the font and it pushes everything just straight down and expands vertically. So you see in this layout uh, that just bump stuff down all of a sudden now this is about 40 percent taller than it was before or so so but what can happen when when you bump text size like up like that is that it it you know it's a lot of stuff changes in the layout it can it can break layouts it's something you really need to be careful about if you decide to go with a fix with site is to do your testing that way and, and bump text size up and down and see what happens to your layout. This is looking pretty good. It doesn't break anything too drastically, but let's jump over here to uh, CNET.com, who also is a is a fixed width site, and it's this is going to be a little hard to see, but watch as I resize this. Uh, you know, it is hard to see, but trust me, this is a, a fixed width site. And watch as I just kick the text size up one. All of a sudden, this tab down here jumped it already kind of broke the layout to and things just get worse as I, as I increase the size here so it just doesn't it's a fix with scythe but bumping that text up and down really breaks it and it's just not doing a very good job of being a fixed with site so let's take a look at a couple of fluid with sites here we're on dzone.com uh, and the deal with a fluid width site is that as you resize that browser window, things on the page kind of restructure, reflow themselves to, to take advantage of that new space. So uh, watch as I increase the size up and down on this site. What's happening is these things are kind of pushing into each other and these blurb text right here, the, the line length is getting long. Um, that's all that's really happening here. And I don't, I'm not trying to pick on Dzone because I'm actually working with them right now to redesign and re-overhaul this in a, in a much better way. But look at the problems with this design right now. I'll, I'll try to move this around. Basically, extending the, the browser window width on this site, all it, all it is really doing here to, to, to make the experience, you know, supposedly better is, is filling out, is extending this line length of this blurb right here. And you can get it so long that it's just, it's actually just worse. It's not making better use of that space. It's making worse use of that space because it's harder to read sentences of really long line lengths. You know, you can think of like a newspaper and how short those columns are. It's just because it's, it's a lot easier to read actually. Uh, you know, something like, you know, eight to ten words a line is a lot easier to read than thirty. You know, 
So, <clears throat> and you'll also notice as things get smaller here, things are bumping into each other and jumping around and things really just become a mess. So if you're going to go with a fluid width sight, you can't, you really got to take care and time to make sure that the things that, that are fluid width and move with the, with the browser window do smart things. So uh, this is just my own site, and this is nothing remarkable at all, believe me, but uh, it's really simple, but I just wanted to show you an example of what you can do maybe in, in to be a little bit more thoughtful in, in, in what happens when you expand a browser. When on, on my site, you just if as you expand things, these four columns of, of stuff I have in here, information, just kind of get wider and, and, and can breathe a little more and space themselves out for the available width of the browser window. And as you get too small, you see they kind of jump into new columns. So, you know, it's this is a really simple and not a big deal for a layout, uh, but that's just something you can do. You can kind of expand, you know, use that extra browser window to space things out for longer rather than just like increase line length and stuff like that. So that is an, uh, a fluid width website now let's take a look at a couple of elastic width websites here we're on johntangerine.com this is a really cool site with lots of website kind of development tips and stuff like that uh, this is at what is known as an elastic width website so when the text is resized on this site and not just the text but the images too just pressing that command uh, minus or command plus that we use to increase text size it doesn't it doesn't behave in the same way it expands horizontally as well as vertically check check it out as this happens so the line length doesn't is is, is the same um, so it just tends to, to break that layout less it's it's don't think of it so much as resizing the text but resizing everything it's like zooming in on the website really so that is a that's a it's kind of a, a cool way to you know, make sure that your layout is just a lot safer and accessible for people that are trying to bump up the size of type. You know, it just doesn't screw up your layout. It has some problems as well, though. You can see there's no limit to how much you can do this. Let's say this is already getting pretty big, and I'm already off the screen horizontally, and I can just keep going here. So, you know, just look at how big this gets, and this image gets big too. That's pretty cool. But if this is the size of text that I want, now I'm needing to do horizontal scrolling as well as vertical scrolling to browse this website. So it's another thing you just need to think about and take care about. Is do do I really want to do it this way too? Because uh, the, you know, there's upsides and downsides to this with the horizontal scrolling. There are ways to to combat this too. Let's take take a look at. Uh, uh, four five six uh, beret street I think that's how you pronounce it they also have an elastic width website uh, this is gonna be hard to see because we're working at 800 pixels here but this is really cool I can kind of explain it um, if I expand the browser window out here and then press plus you can see how it, it, it the whole websites width expands to fit but it stops at the size of your browser window so they've used a maximum width of of the width of your browser window so that it, it can never go bigger than that so you'll never have to deal with that horizontal scrolling problem as you bump down and up so that's just a really cool way to deal with elastic websites so there's fixed width and fluid width and elastic widths and we've looked at all those those are the the major ones uh, but there is kind of some hybrid techniques and some other things that, that are possible to do with web layout that just kind of make more thoughtful use of that space as the browser window grows up and down. So let's take a look at here at Hicks Design. I know we've used them for examples in the past, but they do some cool stuff and with cool techniques. So uh, you can see that as I expand my browser window up and down, or, 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 or narrower and wider you see that the main content area doesn't move a whole lot so it's not fluid with that way but you see what's happening with the images there they kind of shrink down to as small as they need to be for the uh, for the sidebar here now I'll, let's see I'm gonna expand it wide and then bring the whole window over so you can see when it's wide enough the the, the sidebar is broken into kind of two columns here but then as soon as you get too small it kicks one of those sidebars down uh, just because there isn't room for it anymore and you can see these images small up to fit very slick use of uh, uh, 
different browser sizes, kind of a different experience for those viewers. Another kind of cool example here of making interesting use of that space if you have it is Newsvine. So let's take a look at this site. Uh, they have a fixed width site, which is, you know, it's hard to see what the space we're working with, but it's a fixed width site. And then hanging off the side, you'll see this little tab over here. If you have a big browser or have a big monitor and have the room, you can flip this out and it gives you this whole sidebar over here. So if you have the room for it, you can get more content in your page, make good use of that space. But if you don't, you can flip it in and not have to worry about it. Just kind of a cool, thoughtful thing you can do with, with more browser window space. I want to point out that even on these fixed width sites, there it's kind of going to be kind of a thing of the past, really. We're looking at, this is Opera 9 I have this site open in now, and you'll see that um, even though I have decided this is a fixed width site, and in most browsers, resizing the text up and down is just going to uh, force force things the site to grow vertically and not horizontally, they have this zoom, which is how you increase the size of things in, in Opera. And just hitting 120, you see the whole thing zooms in. It kind of scales down the image quality, which isn't great, but it doesn't even have the option to just straight up resize the text. It just zooms. And Firefox 3, the beta is doing this, and IE8 is doing this. This is really just the browser way of the future, is that it's going to just have this zoom thing, which is smart. And but you know, it's going to take a while for these browsers to catch on. So thinking in you know elastic and thoughtful, fluid width is is still kind of something to think about still. So let's take a peek at some of the code and how this is done. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail, but you'll be able to see the, the general page structure and get started so you kind of understand it a little bit. Um, this is the markup for just a really simple page like I use every time. I'm sure you're used to by now with just a, a title and a link to the style sheet and one div for the whole body that we call page wrap and then a big paragraph in the middle. You know, nothing to this markup. But we'll jump over to the CSS. Uh, again, this is just my my base CSS that I use for all kinds of stuff. What's important here is the page wrap that we wrap that paragraph in. Um, let's let's erase this and let's just call it 400 pixels. And then we'll go back and we'll save it and go back to the website and <clears throat> reload and see what we get. We get this uh, this white box is the page wrap that's centered. So you can see it's centered in the website and 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 as I increase and decrease the size of the text, it stays 400 pixels and and grows vertically. So that's how you know that's a fixed width site, real straightforward, obvious, right? Now let's uh, we'll jump back to that CSS there and change it instead of a uh, uh, to make a fluid width site. Basically, you're working in percentages. You can either not have a width at all or declare a width in percentages, and that's how you'll get a fluid width site. We'll call it 80 percent and jump back, save it, jump back. Now our page wrap is, 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 is what the browser window is considering 80% of the size of itself. So now you'll see as I increase and decrease the size of this browser window, the, uh, the size of it is 80% is and the text kind of reflows to make room for itself there. So uh, that's, and like I said, you can do that too without declaring a width at all. The width defaults to 100%, which is fluid width. So that's another way to, to go jump back to the CSS and now we'll take a look at what you might not you know you probably already know those two that was pretty straightforward but let's call this 35 M and M are those values that make it elastic so if we do that and jump back and reload that is 35 M values wide and you'll see it kind of behaves without doing anything. It behaves like a fixed width site, but as I resize the text up and down, we get the uh, the elastic effect. So that's that's how that works. Now, just so you know, there's a there's a lot of work that goes into creating an M-based layout. I mean, it's 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 cool, and it's something you want to consider because <laughs> how cool and accessible and usable it can be. 
but there's there's a lot to think about it if you're going to start with m values you really need to use m values everywhere for your text for your column sizes for your header size everything needs to be thought out in this kind of maybe not intuitive m way so that everything resizes properly you know when it's just a block of text like this it's easy but when you start getting columns and sidebars and footers and images and stuff in there it gets a little more complicated so just so you know what you're getting in for if you start to do an m based layout and always remember you can go to css-tricks.com for more tips and tricks and tutorials and you know i i publish stuff all week long there and only you know generally do these screencasts once a week and uh, so there's just a lot more content there. You can subscribe, get it in your email. Um, you, you know, you already know about these videos because you're watching them, but there's just a lot more content there. One thing that's changed this week is that if you like to comment on these CSS tricks, you'll see down in the comment area that there's two things that have changed. One thing, you can use OpenID now to on the on the site to register and that way your comments are automatically approved and uh, it's just a consistent way there's actually a post about it if you want to read more about open ID and a couple of links here just click that and you, you can read more about it and the big change is now that you can register on CSS tricks which <clears throat> which is a nice thing because you don't have to fill out then your name and your email address and your website every time uh, if you're logged in, you'll just see that comment field, and you can just type your comment and hit submit and save yourself time. So, all right, that's it for this week. See you later. Bye.